are you Wallace from Wallace and Gromit? Like, have you set up the, tra- the train to like collect I think he is. the um the presents? You already have a dog. You just need a turtleneck. No, not a turtleneck. A sweater vest. A mm-hmm. sweater vest. You need one of them. Yeah, it's Sophie won't let me put the railway through the house. Oh, that's a damn shame. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, Nick. Yeah. yeah, which is why it's going through the garden instead. <laughs> Okay. Hello. Yeah, I'm doing the introductions <laughs> Sorry, now. Said it just it's <laughs> okay. It's fine. Let's roll with it. Hello. Welcome to the shipping forecast. We know what we're doing. We do, sometimes. <laughs> I'm James. Joining me, as always, is Nick. Hi. And Grace. Hello. And today, we're looking at the James Bond and other films, fan fiction that we found last week. Yeah, it was a little bit of a hodgepodge last week, wasn't it? We yeah, we 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 had a few to uh, to go through. But I must say, by the end of the edit, it was predominantly James Bond. But we did end up looking at a lot of other kind of films that were meant to come out in twenty twenty. Yes, yeah, we had a quick skim. Mm-hmm. Indeed. So, in the meantime, how are you guys? Have you done your Christmas shopping? Are we all set? This will be airing when Christmas is coming, so... (laughs) It's... Everyone should be in a festive mood by the time this goes out. They don't know that. You're not supposed to tell the listeners that. They they know we're not live, Nick. (laughs) It's it's a podcast. Oh, what? (laughs) You can't expect... (laughs) No. Oh, I, I just... I'm sure they know we recorded this at some point before the week of Christmas. Oh, I thought people thought they could just turn on the podcast thing and then, like, a light goes off in each one of our rooms and we're like, right, that's yeah. it, time to record. Right, no, we got to record. <laughs> no, that's... Oh, I wish. I'd have less editing to do. Yes, <laughs> if it was just going out live. Mm-hmm. You'd have less editing, but more regret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Christmas. I had a bit of a thing with Christmas. I've managed okay. to get the vast majority of my presents. However, it's my first year in my new home, and I got given a tree. However, I didn't get any decorations. Now, the problem was, I started my Christmas shopping in November, and then ran out of money, so I didn't have enough money to buy decorations. <laughs> and by the time I got to I got to the shops on the 10th of December, which is payday, there were no Christmas decorations left. Really? Oh, so that's surprising. They what did you do? <laughs> My stepdad turned up with a set of lights, saying, here, you'll need okay. these. <laughs> and you'll I bought... need these, it's dangerous to cut. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> he knew. He somehow knew you wouldn't have bought Christmas decorations. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then it got to the stage where I was like, well, I'm going to need something to put on the tree. And uh, I bought a pack of 12 crackers. And stuck them in the tree at various points, and it looked okay. Do you mean the kind that pop, or like the kind you put on cheese? <laughs> Jacob's crackers. Jacob's crackers. Lining, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're uh, the the very festive because each one comes with a little slice of Wednesday deal with cranberries on on it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. You can drink wine underneath it and just shake the tree. And yes. <laughs> oh. However, all was not lost because. Sophie's mum uh, went to work and came back and announced that she'd bought me two packs, uh, two huge packs of baubles for about a pound each. So I finally got my Christmas decorations and all that's left is to put the model railway around the base of the tree. (sighs) Lights, crackers, balls for a pound and train set. Yes. (laughs) Well, I think I grew some extra grey hairs today trying to make uh, gifts for people. Because I decided, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna go the extra mile this year. I'm going to take some time off work and make my bestest friends some, some jewellery. With all this new jewellery uh, wire shit I've got. Uh, Ooh. It, it got very middle-aged very quickly where I tried a new perspective. <laughs> Where I tried a new pursuit, it went badly, I drank, <laughs> I woke up the next day and I went, oh fuck, I still haven't finished this and the bits I have done look an absolute mess. So I had another crack at it. 
Um, it still looks horrible, but I'm hoping the charm I've had through my youth, which has been, if it's handmade, you know, your mum and dad lo- loves it, you know, that sort of shit. And they're just like, oh, you tried. I'm hoping I can ride on that despite being in my mid-twenties. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Look, I made yeah. you this. And they're going to be like, yeah, <laughs> thanks. It's so nice, Grace. And I'm like, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah it's really, yeah. And then it goes in the back of a cupboard <laughs> and you never see it it's, again. It's thoughtful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But because I made it and I'm going to tell them, I'm going to guilt trip them. By telling them how much time I put into it. <laughs> so you say you're making uh, jewellery for your closest, away. bestest friends, right? You don't like jewellery. I was about to say, what are you getting me and Nick? You don't like, you don't wear jewellery. <laughs> I, I was just imagining, like, <laughs> I'm just curious what themed jewellery we would get if you were making me and Nick some jewellery. Well, I'd make you a centre scorch so you'd give it back to me. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So I can have it. <laughs> Can I have one of them clocks that rappers used to wear? <laughs> oh, the massive. Yeah, there's just there's just like a big um like a big gold chain with like an alarm clock on the end of it or whatever it was. So I can do that for yeah, you all right. actually. So in my house, I I have two analog clocks. But the thing oh. is they're so loud. I can't have the batteries in them when we record the show. Okay. Because you'd hear like <laughs> In the background. Oh, the whole way through. I like a clock. So in like the that. end, I, I have... took the batteries out. Yeah, but I have an analog clock running right next to me right now. You can't hear that. Mine's super loud. It's in the kitchen, and you could still the microphone was still oh. picking it up. Yeah, oh, wow. that that's it. It's one of the many reasons why I would like a grandfather clock. No, Just... you're not allowed grandfather clock when we record the podcast <laughs> in the same house. Do you have any idea how hard that's going to make it on the edits? It's on the plus on the plus side, your timestamps would be very accurate because I want one of them. Ah. I want one of them no, ones which chimes because... on the hour. Yeah, but the chimes will only come in on your end. It won't be accurate for us. I won't be able to sync it up or anything. <laughs> also, if I had to edit you, you'd hear you'd hear tink. Tunk, tunk, yeah, tunk, if... tunk, 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 and then tunk, tunk. <laughs> Yeah, if I skipped any of your footage, everyone would know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, don't get a grad. I beg you. Alternatively, soundproof one of the rooms in your house and then get a grandfather clock. Oh, yeah, the, uh, I'm not allowed a grandfather clock, you'll be glad to know. Um, Good. Oh, right, we've okay. compromised on a pendulum-operated wall clock, however, that's going in the hallway. That's going to be even noisier, isn't it? <laughs> no, it, it's fine, seriously. The The mechanism in, isn't as big and chunky as, as one on a grandfather clock. It is hoping. <laughs> James is going to go tonight, go to bed tonight thinking of this, this pendulum swinging oh. back and forth <laughs> and the noise it makes. As soon as we're <laughs> done recording today, I'm happening. messaging Sophie, just begging her to sabotage your clock every other Sunday when we record. <laughs> I found out recently that an old version of an alarm clock was just a candle that had nails in it, and as the wax melted, the candles would uh, the candle would melt the wax and drop the nails in it oh, wow. into a metal pan at the bottom, and that would wake you up. That's pretty That's cool. And the more nails in it, sort of indicated the snooze button. <laughs> yeah, so cool. you'd have so nails have at every five minute <laughs> interval. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So, Nick, what have you been reading? I have been reading a fic called Curse You, James Bond. And uh, in lieu of an author name, it was actually written for uh, something called the Unstable Universes podcast. Now, I must confess, I didn't really have a lot of time um, in the intervening sort of two weeks to actually go and look these guys up. So, if, if, you, if you're out yeah, there listening... I didn't realise this was yeah, if, if... done for another podcast. I'm sorry if we're treading on any toes... By covering this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I, I must confess, if, if you're out there, I, I am sorry, and I will get around to listening to uh, to your podcast eventually. Okay, so... So I'm just looking it up. Unstable Universes. Ah, okay, so what they do is they randomly generate two fandoms and then have to write a crossover. Oh! So they're, so they're okay. not actually in the same business as us. They do... Um, they do writing of theirs, and they'll just they just pick mashups. Oh, nice! So they've got talent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that sounds like a mouse better idea th- th- than this stuff that we're doing. Let's just pick up and go <laughs> on. <dare>. We took <laughs> a lot of uncultured and like I'm not trying as hard as I should be. <laughs> so, for example, they've got, they've mashed up Attack on Titan and Pingu in a prison AU, and then they've uh, written something about that. That sounds sick. Yeah, yeah. it does. <laughs> I like that. It, it sounds like a lot Send of fun. Send it over. <laughs> Yeah, this one was their fourteenth episode, James Bond slash Cars Two in the Victorian era. Yes, I've just been googling this stuff. So, Nick, why don't you tell us about this? There are um, a lot of lovely little lines in this. <laughs> I I had a ball reading it, but anyway, I'll I'll start by reading the summary because this will sort of tell you uh, what's going on. Goldfinger has taken over London. It's up to Mater and James Bond to go back in time and undo his reign of terror. But who is me glistening quench, and is he the true mastermind being gold, uh, behind Goldfinger's triumph? But You didn't stumble on that one, Nick. It does actually say being Goldfinger's. Yeah, it does. It does. There is a little, uh, there is a little typo there. Um, ah, that's fine. I apologise. I have been reprimanded for this before. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Oi. <laughs> We're not that much of I just... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to get that little dig in there. Fine. Okay, so what happens in Curse You, James Bond? Uh, okay. Walk us through it. Uh, okay, so it starts and Mater and James Bond are in a little bit of a chase. It can be assumed, although it's never really sort of explained, that James Bond is a car too, because, of course, that's, oh. how, that's how the universe of cars works. Makes sense. Okay, so... Yeah, so uh, while this is going on, there is a news broadcast of, uh, of sorts. Goldfinger, the main villain, um, has gone on the air and said, all elected officials are dead, your royal family is dead, you have nobody left to rule you except me. Dun, dun, dun. And in, in this, <laughs> just in case you're interested, uh, Goldfinger is a pure gold hummer. Yeah, that adds <laughs> up. I can see that. <laughs> it's just a fucking... Blinged out Hummer, apparently. Well, there we go. Now now there's an image. But surely, no. if every elected official was killed, we'd just have another election. Um, yeah, apparently, but this isn't how it works, apparently, in the Cars universe. Huh. Ah, it's... interesting. So what are the implications for the Cars universe, now that we know they don't are, have are really... elected officials and don't have elections? <laughs> Why? I thought you said we weren't going to get political. I'm sorry. Show, and you're literally hey. trying to work out the. I don't know. It's just. Why? It's just... There's a fine line between getting political and the law implications for the Cars universe. <laughs> oh. Apparently. How do you think they choose their elected representatives? Well, apparently, all you've got to do is kill everybody in charge and then go on the news just saying, hey. Huh. What are you going to fucking do? Yeah. Guess it's time for That's... me to step in. <laughs> I'm captain now. <laughs> Follow-up question. What kind of car is the queen? Uh, if I... the royal family is dead, probably. and presumably this is in Britain. a bunch of Land Rovers. I yeah, she'd, pro- she'd probably be a Land Rover. Driving. I can believe. It is, nev- it is never adequately explained. However, I reckon the queen would oh. be a Bentley Flying Spur. Oh, okay. Mm. No, I think I'm with Grace on this. She's probably like an old Land Rover. Because that's what she worked on in the war. Like a... uh, fair enough. Yeah, they, they still do have Range Rovers. Do they? Uh, do the royal family? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay, so what what is James Bond gonna do to save the day? So okay, uh, James Bond has seen this. He radios Mater, who is um, sort of just behind uh, just behind him by the looks of things, saying it's time for Plan B. Meet at the rendezvous point, which is inside the face of Big Ben, because. Here's the thing about Big Ben in this. Apparently, you could go into be in inside the face of Big Ben, and you could time travel. There was no Makes sense. You can fit a car into. Yeah, Big apparently. Ben. You can get it up the flights of stairs. So, I... just for those of us who haven't seen cars, who is Mater? Mater is a rusty old tow truck. Bit of a uh, well, I say a bit of a ah. redneck, a lot of a redneck, as you can imagine a rusty old American tow truck to be. Uh, and he is one of Lightning McQueen's first friends in this oh. town in the arse end of nowhere. Nice. Although Lightning oh, nice. McQueen doesn't know it until the end, because 
he turns from being this sort of brash, arrogant race car into, you know, a nicer person. Because this is a Pixar movie. And that's what happens in Pixar movies. Oh. Watch Cars, it's quite good. Cool. Uh, okay, so... Um, they arrive at Big Ben. And apparently Mate has done some research into the person behind all this bad stuff. And... Uh, He's done research. The, the stupidest car or tow truck in the entire universe of this show. Yes. He's done research. Oh, God. Okay. And he's come oh, up God. with a name of who's behind all this bad stuff. Okay. Um, tremble before you as you read the letters. Me glinting quench. And the only record, That's quite a name. the only record of a race car with that crazy name was way back in eighteen ninety two. Right. Do you so see? A, you... Do you see a problem with this? No, because I know fuck all <laughs> <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> they didn't have many cars back in eighteen ninety two. He's okay. a horse. No. <gasps> no. Oh. <laughs> it's, damn it. It's that even great. better. This is really knackered. Oh, pony. It is even better. Okay. Okay. I'm interested now. Okay. So, before you read any lines from Mr. Bond, I feel like you need to establish which James Bond this is going to be. Mm. And I think it should be Sean Connery. Of course, because... you sh- of course, you think it should be Sean Connery. He's got the accent. Yes. So, <laughs> and I can't do if you could read accent. any of these lines in a sketchy Sean Connery accent, I would approve. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll do my best. Thank you. Um, but I will read you this uh, this line. In fact, uh, these couple of lines, which shows you how the Victorian times worked in the Cars universe. Okay. Oh God. The Victorian. So they travel back in time, and then yes, they they travel back in time. They are uh, there is a large flash and the sound of gears grinding against each other. Uh, they have travelled back to the year 1892. Um, and here, okay. uh, and the line reads thus. The Victorian era was terrifying for Mater. Instead of the engines and parts he knew and loved, hairy beasts were dragging everyone around. Cows had no ability to move on their own. It reminded him of retirement homes, and he shuddered. Oh, God. <laughs> and here's oh one of the God. best bits. We're going to need our disguises for this one, Mater. James Bond said. <laughs> he, had o- he had already changed and was now a simple wooden cart with two stuffed horses attached. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> oh my god, I really like this spin on it. Like, when every time there's time travel, they've always got to go in disguise, but I've never heard of a fucking car going in yeah. disguise in time travel. So Apparently it good. happens, but what I don't get alone is... with two fake horses. <laughs> Oh my god, I want this to be in the, in the next it's, car appar- film. I go back appar- in time. Apparently, uh, yeah, this sort of happens, but what I don't get is James Bond has the financial backing of MI6 behind him, right? Okay. So, yeah. why doesn't he just disguise himself as a wagon and then go and buy two horses? Because he couldn't take him into Big Ben. Yeah, have you ever tried you? getting two horses up Big Ben? Think it through, <laughs> Nick. God. Let alone a camera. Oh dear. <laughs> Um, it's, saying that, it's, it's never adequately, uh, adequately explained in the Cars universe where the horses went. Maybe they all got made into glue. Mm. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Let's carry well, on. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of engines and stuff. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Possibly. There is. The, yeah, there is true. Maybe they ran out of cow. This is getting worse. This isn't it? Yeah. Let's <laughs> let's, let's wind this back. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, the next part. This is a character from Cars 2, although I must confess I haven't seen Cars 2. Um, Holly Shiftwell, who is this sort of uh, Bond girl type, you know, with the sweet and lovely voice. Yes, Holly Holly Shiftwell. Shiftwell. That's a very James Bond kind of name. Yeah. And a car, very car James Bond It is, yes, because, if memory serves me correctly, Holly manufacture carburetors, I think. I was going to say the shift yeah. a bit. But so, okay. Holly and I'm shift actually, well, it works. So props to Pixar. Because I've just googled Holly shift well. Hmm. And she's clearly like a girl version of the main car, Lightning McQueen. And they've not put two massive jugs on the front or like, <laughs> eyelashes to indicate that this is a girl car. Brilliant. So, nicely done. 
yeah, normally animation, <laughs> you get the female version, and it's like completely different. I'm pretty sure they put a tramp stamp on the on the. Oh, female they, they car, did. Because I remember this advert or something like like Nina Queen was was driving behind her and like looking up her her bonnet, but not How her rude. bonnet, her boot. And then so is that a is that a tattoo? And then yes, like, that's it. Fuck. It's um, Sally uh, Carrera. Sally Carrera, which is her name, uh, which is Lightning McQueen's <laughs> love interest in Cars 1, is a Porsche 911. Now, Porsche 911s, they have, they have oh, like a little sake. sort of lip spoiler on the... Three weeks later. Just under that spoiler, like a tramp stamp. So it's quite funny in the movie. You should watch Cars, it's very good. <sighs> okay. Back to the fic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so Holly Shiftwell is on the radio. Uh, Mater thinks that Holly Shiftwell is his girlfriend. However, over the radio, uh, Holly okay. Shiftwell uh, dumps him, saying, <sighs> "What a bitch!" Yeah, I know. Make that ex. I don't know what Holly Shiftwell uh, sounds like, so I'll just do it in my normal voice. Yes, uh, make that ex-girlfriend, we are through. You are just too stupid for someone as hot as me. As a parting gift, I have outfitted your GPSs with the last known location of Mr. Quench. Goodbye forever. And just like that, Holly's voice cut out. Uh, However, it's okay because A, James Bond can find tons of hot Bond chicks for Mater to enjoy. And B, Mater was too stupid to understand what had just happened. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> poor lad. Yeah, I know. Uh, it gets worse for Mater. <laughs> okay, so basically, they arrive at this house that the GPS leads them to. It's a large mm-hmm. Victor- uh, Victorian... Yeah. It's a large Victorian-style mansion with a wraparound porch, and it's made out of dark wood with large rounded turrets. So basically, your classic sort of Adams Family-style house. Okay. Nice. And yeah, James Bond wants to do all this sort of sneaky spy stuff. He grapples up to the roof to sort of sneak around and find find a way in that way. Mayo just drives up and bangs on the fucking door. <laughs> and of course, there's a mysterious car inside. Hello, Mr. Mater. I've been expecting you. Please come inside. Dun, dun, dun. And of course, Mayo's terribly okay. excited. You know, saying... Holy, I, I didn't even know I was going to end up here. And I don't even look like me. You sure are a smart guy. I can't do a mate of voice. <laughs> um, okay, so it turns out that they uh, go into this creepy old house. Yeah, they, they drive into this creepy old house and there's a decrepit old wagon in front of them. And they want to ask him some questions. So yeah, Mato, with his characteristic enthusiasm, opens the line of questionings. So tell me how you helped Goldfinger so I can stop it. He's doing some real bad stuff in the future that's making your old Brits go up in smoke. I heard that it's you, Mr. McGlinton Quench, who, that is behind everything. So tell me who you are and tell me you'll stop. And of course, James Bond is not in the room yet. However, you, you may remember he is on the roof sneaking around. Of course. How, actually? I... A... A grappling hook, because in oh, a in the Cars universe, it's not that big of a leap to imagine that they have made grappling hooks which work on cars. Yeah, I mean, if the houses are big enough for cars. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, of course, he's on the roof. He's found his way in, because a loud thump came from upstairs as well as the sound of a machine gun firing. Both men sitting downstairs chose to ignore it. Yeah, that sounds about <laughs> right for villains. <laughs> And now here we come to the big reveal, because there has okay. been a build-up to this, as you may have noticed, and we find we finally find out who me glistening quench is. Well, Mr. Mater, I would like to begin my response by saying that I have the utmost respect for you, and it is because of this respect that I will take off my disguise. The disguise <gasps> of the beat-up wooden wagon vanished, revealing a sleek red race car with the flaming number 95 painted on its door. <gasps> Can you guess who it is yet? It's Lightning McQueen. It's Lightning McQueen. Because I read the next line. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Mater is overjoyed, rushing up to embrace his bestest friend in the whole entire world. And yeah, this That's is... when James Bond screams. <laughs> yes. Mater, no! I, I imagine this bit in slow motion. <laughs> yeah. 
And yeah, so. in the same slow motion, Lightning McQueen popped open his hood and shot Mater right in his big fat face. No. However, all is not lost because James Bond is quick off the mark and when time returns to normal, he shoots at Lightning McQueen's tyres to keep him from running away. <laughs> Oh, it is in slow motion. Yes. <laughs> it's actually in slow motion. It is in slow motion. <laughs> and here's the clever bit. Yes, I will try and read this in my best Sean Connery voice. You were clever, weren't you, Miss McGlinton Quench? An anagram for Lightning McQueen. I bet you thought that nobody would figure it out. Luckily for me, I knew nobody would have such a stupid name and set it to queue for further examination. James Bond said nice. as he rolled over to the bar <laughs> and poured himself a glass of triple distilled water oil. <laughs> <laughs> Guess better. How? <laughs> all of your me- all of your men upstairs are dead, and have rigged this place to blow. Goldfinger will never rule London. You're going to go down with your ship, and I'm going to roll away from the explosion slowly. Sh- <laughs> fucking slowly, slowly. No, no, slowly. That's how Sean slowly. Connery would do it. It's, it's very, fine. very difficult to do a Sean Connery accent slowly. when you're fat, northern, and from Hull. Um, I disagree. <laughs> Yeah, but you're slightly less northern than me. Yeah, in, granted. In, in aesthetic. Yeah, that's it. James Bond exited the beautiful country home and hit the button, sending a huge mushroom cloud up into the sky. Um, a mushroom cloud? Yes. So he's nuked London. He has nuked a very small part of London, apparently, he's yes. He's nuked Victorian London. <laughs> it's, I will say, though, you do not need a nuke to generate a mushroom cloud. Oh, re- oh, okay. I stand corrected then. Yeah, you just need a fuckload of petrol. Oh, which they probably have in high <laughs> amounts in the Cars universe. Yes, exactly. Okay, fair enough. So, um, and here we arrive at the end, as the loud cry of Lightning McQueen rose out of the rubble as he slowly burned to death next to his ex-best friend. Curse you, James Bond! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, nice. that was the end. It was short, but very sweet. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, the bit at the end was great. <laughs> Fucking triple distilled the motor oil. Yeah, considering this was written uh-huh. as like, a challenge, that's very well done. They've managed to blend these two universes together pretty well. Yeah, I I thought it was good. I'm not sure it entirely makes sense, but... It doesn't need to. <laughs> no, it doesn't need to. It was very funny. I enjoyed it. <laughs> cool. So I read Making Love and Memories by one Spencer Tibbs Lover. Oh. Okay. Brackets. Nice. Clicks Angel. Okay. I apologize if I pronounced any of that wrong. There are a lot of letters that kind of throw me off. Like how there's two N's in Spencer. <laughs> uh, Jim Cat. So, it's to Jim make Cat sure word you good, isn't it? The N. <laughs> yeah, okay. Spencer Tibbs Lover. Because there's, there's no E in Lover. So, I have no choice but to pronounce it Lover. Like so. Okay. <laughs> and Spencer Tibbs Lover is on a mission. Ooh. They are on the mission to get the character Tony Donozzo from NCIS into every fandom they can. Oh, wow! Well. And this fic, Making Love and Memories, is this this author's attempt to put him in, put Tony Donozzo into the James Bond fandom. Oh, that's okay. dedication. But searching through their history... This character has got around. I've seen him in Stargate Atlantis. I've seen him in Sherlock Holmes. I've seen him here with the X Men. He's been uh, in some big names in... already, this fella, isn't he? Yeah. Hawaii yeah. Five O, J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter. I think this uh, author needs to work in PR. Just saying. hang on. Yeah. J.K. Right. Rowling's all... Harry Potter. I don't. I don't know why I Harry phrased Potter. it like that. <laughs> it's, it's like I read. I read J.K. Rowling along the line, and then, then I realized, oh. <laughs> no, that's not the name of the show. That's the name of the... Yeah, so that that's where that went wrong. J- I'm going to leave that in. <laughs> J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter as opposed to the Poundland version. As, as, as opposed <laughs> to Michael Bay's Harry Potter, which I would argue is the superior Harry Potter. Yeah, but it's not it's called just... Harry Potter, is it? <laughs> it's, it's 
Tanya Trotter. Yeah, that's the Russian one. Yeah. Oh shit! Nice. I've got them all. Oh mixed wow! Up. So Michael Bay sure did Tanya not write Trotter the Russian the one. Best one. Just saying. So making love and memories. Weirdly, this is one of the few fix that we're going to talk about that doesn't actually involve James Bond that heavily. Oh. Because this one is shipping Tony Donozzo and Alec Trevelyan, who was the villain in Goldeneye, as played by Sean Bean. Hey. So it mentions in the tags that this is non-canon compliant. Okay. And yes, it's very non is very non-canon compliant. So in this story, uh Alec Trevelyan is an immortal Omega. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, here we go again. Yeah. So... It's funny, this is oh, the second Immortal Omega pick I've seen, and I don't understand mm. why, but okay, carry on. Both Tony Zanozzo <laughs> and Alex Trevelyan are immortals and lovers, by the sounds of it. Uh, oh. They've been mates ever since Tony's trip to England. When uh, was this? What? It doesn't specify, but there is a car explosion, so it's... It's been immortal modern for times. Long. <laughs> yeah. Tony hasn't. I think Alec Trevelyan's been immortal for a bit longer. Okay. So the first bit, it goes, it starts discussing how Tony discovered he was immortal. He got blown up in a car bomb, and then he woke up in the morgue and scared the morgue person. Oh. Yeah. The coroner, right. that's the word I was looking for. The morgue person. Yeah, the morgue, <laughs> morgsman, as they prefer <laughs> to be known. In the Highlands. Yeah. Morgsman. <laughs> the morg- yeah, the morgsman. <laughs> if you are a morgsman, please write in and tell us what you prefer to be known as. <laughs> Do you prefer coroner or morgsman? I think I'd prefer morgsman. Yeah. Morgsman. The, the morgsman <laughs> clan. Send for the morgsman. The morgsman cometh. <laughs> You're right, I'm, I'm going to look at the body. Fucking hell. Yep, you said all right. I'm on that to be a thing now. Every per- every yeah. mortician is called a morgsman. Yeah, oh. yeah that they they, they arrive so. they arrive in like a big black cloak <laughs> in <laughs> one of those horses and carriages that are just like black with the black horses. Yeah, you nice. need it. Yeah, I think an especially dramatic mortician will call themselves a morgsman. Yeah, that's yeah. it. I hope. It's like, you know, one of one of your relatives died, and then there's just this, like, three knocks on the door, like, doom, doom, The morgsman doom. cometh. And you open it, it's like, did somebody send for a morgsman? <laughs> <laughs> it would take the edge off pe- me- members of your family dying, certainly. Yeah. I don't think You're it like, would. I'm I think it would put the edge on. <laughs> I think... but who the fuck is this nonsense? It's absolutely So to get shit. to get back to the podcast. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot we were doing the podcast. Carry on. So yeah, once Tony discovered he's immortal, he couldn't be part of the NCIS anymore. Oh, that's a shame. What? But this coincided Why? with the attack on New York City when aliens were revealed on national television. Oh yeah, that would be a bad idea to be immortal. At that when point, all the various councils realised there was no point in keeping keeping immortality hidden if aliens and Tony Stark are going to make national news every night. Uh, to Tony Stark? Yeah, so this, this is also in the Avengers universe. The attack on... So, f- fucking... No, the attack yeah. on New York City is the... Is the events of the Avengers film so in 2012. Someone is saying immortal. They're referencing Loki, the evil green horned alien who's come down claiming. No, no, the immortals God. are the immortals are still Tony and Alex Trevelyan, but other supernatural things are at work. For example, Loki and his army of aliens. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. wow! This is things. yeah. So once that happens. The supernatural world isn't really keeping itself as hidden anymore. Um, there's legislation been passed to recognise non-human and enhanced humans as being a thing that need to be protected. Oh my god. X-Men. Um, it was at this point that M, M fired every secret agent over the age of 40. Oh... Which includes Alec Trevelyan and his mate, his best mate, James Bond. Is that 
May as in the ABO sense, or may as in the going down the pub with your friends? Th- it says think... best mate. Yeah, it sounds like going I th- down I the pub. I think they're pals. Yeah, because right, best okay. implies out one of many, and usually ABO is pretty pretty committed to just one, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, I get you. And okay. Alec only has eyes for Tony Tanazo. <laughs> of course. Of course. Uh, so, yeah, there's, they're just talking the rest of this. Um, Alex Trevelyan quite upset about being fired, because he told everyone he was 50, but that's not true. <laughs> he's actually 500 years old in that, roughly, but he oh. stopped counting. So he's a oh, Highlander. Yeah, so he's a Highlander. In the Alpha Base Romega universe. <laughs> wow, okay. I'd like to think this could mean that Sharp is canon as well. Oh, yeah, oh, that, God, no, that, yeah. that'd be amazing. That'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> that, that'd be amazing. He just stops being Sharp and goes to work for, for MI6. Yeah, he mm. knows he, all he's... the tricks, doesn't he? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Getaway vehicles, using weapons, being in disguise. He's got it all. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a bit more dialogue. It's just them discussing like how they're going to get a new job together, doing this kind of whole supernatural-based investigation stuff. Now they both lost their jobs. They're going to become Ghostbusters. They're becoming Ghostbusters, essentially. <laughs> it's amazing wow. that despite being immortal, you still have to live in the realms of mortality where you need a full-time job to stay alive, and there's no yeah. such thing as retirement. Exactly. Oh, They're that... saying that um, Tony's uncle... Richard Paddington has a fund set aside for immortal alphas and omegas. Okay. That's and convenient. That, that is he was nice. invited to a party for immortals, and that's how Alec and Tony met. Okay. And there's there's a paragraph here that really kind of it threw me as I was reading. Like I was just re- it's all kind of exposition, exposition. And then they start talking about James Bond. He never thought giving into James's needs to get laid would change his life so completely. Even for a satyr, James was a horny fucker, but usually didn't put his urges over his need to fuck. Even for a what? A satyr. What? You mean like a like a, a thorn man? Like Mr. Tumnus, yes. Oh! What of them? They, right, okay. Yeah, they just drop that in. Like, James Bond, yeah, by the way, he's a satyr. This, I, I tell you what, this fic is really going places. They're really doing this, aren't they? Yeah, but it starts off just this robot, and then they just start throwing different things in. It's like, oh, by the way, the Avengers happened. Oh, by the way, James Bond, half goat from the waist down. Like, yeah. It's, it's just, I love it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the really... It's exposition through just like, oh, by the way, just sort of side topics <laughs> during their conversation. <laughs> I know, so I kind of like it. They're really pumping the gas on this one. It's... Yeah. <laughs> and then in the next paragraph, once the former 007 decided to play nice, Tony already advised that he intended to introduce him to one Dean Winchester. Oh! Because according to Tony, if there was anyone who could keep up with James's sex drive, it was the elder Winchester. <laughs> oh! So, by the way, the boys from Supernatural are in this too. <laughs> oh. Formerly known by the Greeks as, Ol- as Apollo. <laughs> yeah, oh, and Apollo's in this too. Who is Spencer Reed? That might be an NCIS person. That's Doctor- a Criminal Minds person. Love her. Who is also the Greek god Apollo. <laughs> this is like one of those dreams you oh have where you go to a party and characters from different novels are sort of there and you can talk to them. You can walk up to them and talk to them. This moved yeah. like an acid trip. It just didn't stop anywhere. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> it. It's, it. it's just... like... And then the just... dragon walked in and it was great. Yeah. <laughs> and that dragon happened to be Tony Montana. Yeah, so yeah. it was Tony Montana and it was fucking Titania and behind Oberon's back. But Oberon didn't mind because he was building an apartment in Miami. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Oh. Yeah, it's, this is it's, this it. is the thing. You've you've just sort of walked in and you're like, oh my god, I'm on a table with Sherlock, Doctor Who, fucking Winston Churchill, Napoleon. What's going on? Oh. Anyway, so they kiss, they say Happy Valentine's Day, and that's the end. There's just lots of exposition. That's, that's <laughs> sweet. That's that's actually quite sweet. 
Mm. Yeah. <laughs> quite a sweet quite a sweet ending to a, a what the fuck kind of mm. fic. So this was apparently a prequel to a longer idea that they have been teasing. Oh. Now I've searched I've searched through their history. I cannot find the sequel if it has indeed been written yet. Oh, okay. So they have written other stuff involving Alec Trevelyan. But it didn't seem related. Okay. Oh, that's a shame. So, I didn't look much further. But if it is out there, please let me know. I'm happy to do a follow-up on this. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, Grace, what have you been reading? So, I've been reading The Great British Bake Off, the missing series by Zephyr Fox. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I made the noise, I just wanted to join in. <laughs> so this is um this is the James Bond bake off crossover. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, I forgot I, about this. I have to say I was half asleep when I first read it. Uh, and I didn't I I didn't know what the hell was going on. So I reread it and went, Holy fuck, so much more happened than I realised initially. <laughs> oh my I god. So I've ended up having to last minute write everything down. Honestly. Okay. So, summary. The spies of MI6 meet their matches in Mary Berry and Paul Hollywood. And Paul <laughs> has a secret that comes to light. Ooh. So already there is intrigue. Like, what the okay. fuck is Paul Hollywood up to? My prediction. Yeah? Paul Hollywood is Alec Trevelyan. Like he's gonna rip his ma- he's gonna rip a mask off. And be like, it was me, James. It was me all along. That sort of thing. Nick, have you got any thoughts? I reckon that Paul Hollywood is going to be M. Oh. Or the or the, the new one. Wait, M. so he's gonna rip his mask off and it's Dame Judy Dench under the <laughs> mask. No, he's he's just the new M and this is apparently oh, this is right. this is like a test that the S from MI six have gone through. I um, much prefer the idea that he was Dame Judy Dench doing a deep voice <laughs> the entire time. It's Hello 007, it was me all along. <laughs> just rip mask off. Like, ah, it was me. <laughs> So okay, what, so let's my, find out what actually happened. <laughs> so what I thought was going to happen was just it was just going to be an AU where Bond and the gang weren't actually going to be spies, but there were going to be some little puns, little quips in there, and someone was going to be like, "Shake it, don't stir it, James," or something <laughs> like when made, like trying to fold a creme brulee, or I don't know what the fuck, or a meringue or something, and. Uh, no, no, far more plot was in here than I realised. <laughs> oh, so, excellent. yeah, it, it kind of cuts back and forth in storyline in... It cuts back and forth in storyline in a kind of... They're po- the two presenters are pausing footage. So I'm imagining it as, like, they've got a, some... VHS tapes and they've got one of those CRT monitors and they're like, pause it. This is what happened. But, yeah, so it starts I mean, it's set in the GoldenEye timeline, isn't it? According to the tags. Yeah, but this is the Bake Off, which wasn't. Ah, so either either James Bond has gone to the future, or the Bake Off has gone to the past. You know, if you'd shut up, I'll tell you what's going I'm, on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to make your dream come true. I'm trying to justify CRT monitors for you. Uh, I I appreciate that. I'm sorry. Good. You should know <laughs> by now that CRT monitors need no justification. They yeah, look I cool, they one. sound cool. <laughs> okay, so it seems to revolve around two of the presenters watching old footage of all the bizarre things that have hap- been happening to them in the show. So oh, the scene okay. begins with Mel, and she spots Alec having trouble with his oven. Oh dear. So, classic British Bake Off style, Q innuendo. And so, <laughs> I can't read my own notes. <laughs> oh no. I should have known this would happen. <laughs> I do love this line. Um, the trouble that Alec is having with his oven... Um, Yes, I'm afraid the oven door's jammed. I can't pull it out. So this burly man from MI6. Um, <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> he wasn't that. It, this was the nineties. Like he was kind of young and slender at this point. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, but In I thought both the presenters of the Great British Bake. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well. He's a bit, bit Fair broader, point. isn't he? Yeah, and, b- and besides, um, as we say in Hull, I thought Alec Trevelyan and Sean Bean were both well had. So yeah, that's true. And he can't open an oven. But yeah, she refers to him as one of the unluckiest bakers, <laughs> as once again having trouble with his equipment. And so Q Sue elbowing her in the ribs, winking and saying that oh, she'd help him with his equipment any time. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah. So they introduce Alec. Uh, is it originally from Truro in Cornwall, but was raised in Sheffield. He has a lifelong love of grilling and only recently discovered his love of baking when he found out that creme brulee and meringues are made using slow torches. Aha. Oh, oh what? <laughs> really? Yes. Back what in a sec. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, did, I didn't know you set things on fire to bake them. Oh, my God, I'm going to have the time of my life. Well, you're only kind of uh, caramelising the top with naked fire, but this, uh, never mind. Um, so the raised in Sheffield is a nod to Sean Bean's accent and origin. Yes. Yeah. And the blowtorches, I'm assuming it's because Alex sets fire to things and likes to cause explosions. He's a pirate. Well, he's got that. He's got that scar across his face through the second half of Goldeneye. Spoilers oh. for 1995's hit film Goldeneye. But it's the same age as Grace. If you haven't seen it, shame oh, on you. Fuck it is, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, it's a good film. It holds up. Yes, it does. To them introducing other people in the tent. So Alec Trevelyan's there, James Bond is there, and it, it cuts to David Webb, who I think is an opera singer, and I think he dated a Strictly dancer, but other than that, I didn't find much information on him. Ruby Gardner and... Catherine Morris and Julia Patel, I think, are just made-up characters because I just found random Instagram accounts for people who were spelt wrong. Oh, yeah. okay, dog. So it's uh, not as if it's just MI6, it's just um, Alec Trevelyan and James Bond, then? Pretty much. Well, James hasn't shown up yet, I don't think. No, James hmm. Bond is in this. They're the same oh, right sorry. now that yeah. he's one of the participants. Ah, uh, okay, sorry. Yeah. So... Him, him and Alec are obviously kind of squaring off against each other a little bit, having already known each other. Like, oh, you're in the tent too, eh? Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, she pauses the video and she's asking, uh, you know, do you want another bottle of wine? Yeah, we'll have another bottle. So they break out another bottle of wine and they play the video again, <laughs> alluding to it's been a tough week. So we're already starting to think something else has happened in the tent. Why the, why the hell they need all this wine? Either way, the video plays. And Paul Hollywood is going round all the bakers, as he does, you know, how are you doing? And, you know, what are you making today? That sort of thing. And they're coming across James Bond, who's hissing, going, I know what I'm doing. It's oh, not too oh, hot. Grace, Grace. Yeah? Sean Connery accent. <laughs> wrong James Bond. Oh, yeah, they say it it's is the wrong line. James Bond. Yeah, damn get it. Fucked, okay. James, get fucked. Fair enough. Get fucked. Fine. Get fucked. Fine. Yeah, it's Irish okay. Bond. Piss Brosnan accent. Yeah, it's Irish Bond. I don't know how to do accents. Fine, just. <laughs> Fine. But yeah, he's, 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 he seems to be talking to himself. He's having a little argument with himself. I know what I'm doing. It's not too hot. <laughs> oh. So everyone's looking at each other like, what the fuck's he? Who's he talking to? And then. It cut to the drawing he did of like this this galaxy Milky Way uh, looking design for his cake. So he was trying to make a, a Genoese sponge layer cake with chocolate mousse filling. And it was going to be enrobed with four different colours of mirror glaze with decorative silver balls depicting the Milky Way on top. Fancy. And yeah, cut... that's, that's the Great British Bake Off all over. <laughs> Lots of fancy it... cake. Mmm. And then it cut to James Bond looking into his bowl and then looking up at Paul Hollywood. And Paul Hollywood was just there tapping his ear with a smirk as he turned away to oh. follow the ladies. So Paul's oh. up to something. Paul is up to something. And I think he's so speaking down Bond the Bond is earpiece. wearing a wire. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe or, he is. Or he's, caught, or he's caught Bond cheating and he's thrown it into his cake in his mixture. Uh. He's like, bitch. <laughs> 
fucking <laughs> cheat on my show, get some some professional down here telling you it's too hot. Not on my watch. Right. <laughs> play play the tape again. <laughs> and they're like, why is he still here? And they're looking over to Bond in the corner with crutches. Yeah, he was eliminated last week. And you've just it shots to Bond just in crutches, broken leg. Like what? <laughs> oh looking, dear, what the fuck? Looking at Alec put a tray of perfectly circular biscuits into the oven. Oh. And they're like, do, do we just ignore him? I guess. Right then. <laughs> but yeah, apparently James had left the tent last week after a disastrous technical challenge that resulted in a broken leg. <laughs> That's... He'd have been star baker two weeks before, but as you know, that won't keep you safe. <laughs> How badly can bacon go to put James Bond in crutches? Well, spies are involved. We've already had a very dodgy oven. We've had an earpiece, yeah. and something's happened where his leg's broken in a, in a mm. technical challenge. So, hmm. so sabotage. So sets back. Is there any more footage? Mal says, mm. and she's like, "Oh, it's, a lot of it's disappeared. It got confiscated." Oh, do you think? And then they find one, and they're like, "Do you think we should watch it?" And they're like, "Ah, fuck it, more wine. Press the play button. <laughs> we'll enjoy our last bit of freedom." So <laughs> this is exactly how I imagine the hosts are, like when they're not recording. Incidentally, this is just a girls' just night. Lots of island. wine. <laughs> yeah, kind of shit. Me and my friends would do if we had secret footage. We'd like get the wine out. Exactly. VHS. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> I see why you were confused. I have no idea. Yeah. I know it's it's all yeah. This is a lot more serious espionage storytelling, more than I expected from this fan fiction for sure. More than I expected from the Bake Off universe, anyway. Okay, so Bakers, you have thirty minutes remaining, and there's a lot of commotion as everyone starts to panic about the thirty minutes left. And David Ooh. Webb stares at the mixing bowl he just flung into the centre aisle and gave a steam kettle shriek full of anger and frustration. The dough, it looked as though it had hardly risen, oozed onto the carpet tiles of the tenth floor. This is all your fault, he screamed at James. He dramatically tossed his apron to the side and pulled out a gun. Alec, Ooh. get him. James hurled one of his crutches at David, who ducked, dropping his gun, clearly panicking. David ran for the tense exit, putting him in position for Alec's flying tackle. <laughs> wow. As the camera well. turned to follow the action, Paul Hollywood's voice came off screen. That's enough of that, I think. And the screen went black. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Oh. Where's yeah. this going on? Oh. So shit hit the gas. <laughs> like, it's just like fucking... And it's been alluding to it all the way through, so it's actually been really well set up. <laughs> And now I'm going to okay. have to wing the rest of it because... Oh, uh, mm. So you don't know what the secret is? No. No, I oh, don't know okay. what but I can <laughs> All that build-up and you're going to leave us high and dry? Quite frankly, I think the read, like the listeners should just look this up themselves. But Yeah, I feel, yeah, yeah, okay. I feel like we shouldn't spoil any twists okay, about, on the show at this we, point. How about we say, you know, spoilers ahead, by the way, and then I'll just tell you the ending. Yeah, sure, that works. If you're interested in reading this, and I think you should, stop listening now or skip ahead to, I don't know, <laughs> whenever we stop talking. Maybe I'll put a timestamp in the show notes if I remember. Yes. I probably won't. Skip ahead to the timestamp that we will edit in skip after Skip ahead the two minutes if you want to avoid spoilers. And it pans to Paul, Alec and James have all fucked off to the pub together. <gasps> right? Okay. And the line starts with... How did you manage to go from a double O to a master chef? Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, and this, mm. this is the gayest bit in the entire Yeah, I was just about to read that. Where, like, Alec goes up to get some drinks and Paul's just checking his ass as he walks away and shit like that. <laughs> and then James is getting a little bit jealous. He's like, that's my ass. Don't, don't you poach my partner. <laughs> Pun oh, so they are together. Okay. I think so. <laughs> so the line that threw me was, they're impressed at Paul Hollywood, despite himself, despite being a master chef, that the man is in such good shape. And I assume he just kind of rips off like the chef garb, and it's just like chiselled abs. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, like Paul Hollywood's <laughs> fucking jacked. Yeah, Paul Hollywood is just hench <laughs> underneath it all. <laughs> Hiding the fact he's a double O agent. Oh, for Or God's former sake. double O. Oh, okay. oh, okay, so... Didn't see that so coming. So, listen. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> we caught the ring that hired Webb. Q doesn't think you'll have any further trouble with them. Unless you have any other enemies that we don't know about. Paul shrugged. You never know what might come crawling out of the woodwork over the years. So he's just got enemies. He's made so many enemies and he's just sitting there on the telly. Like, That's... for season upon season waiting for trouble to show up. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, so this has set yeah. it up for a sequel. It feels that way. It definitely feels that way. Oh, dear. With the two, two double O agents being mentored by Paul fucking Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dealing oh, with excellent. them gave me the skills Screening to deal with Mary Berry. Berry. Oh dear. That is excellent. That is absolutely wow. excellent. <laughs> yeah, I approve. That was properly. That was properly well written. It was like you didn't yeah. really know where it was going. I didn't expect an actual spy novel in no. our fan fiction. Yeah, no, absolutely. Was... And here we are. Yeah, I had no idea. Like the first half of it, I just thought it was them looking over old footage, having a chin wag and some wine. But no, it all started fucking going off the hinges. Yeah, <laughs> it's especially mm. from uh, from sort of such a humble premise. Yeah. 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 Great British Bake Off. It makes me want to know more, though. I want to know what the fuck happens in those technical challenges. So if they want to write what the fuck actually happened in those technical challenges, because I'm just imagining sabotage on biblical proportions. Oh, <laughs> it'd be so great. Put a cherry bomb in a fucking glass, eh? would It'd be brilliant. So See, Bond, this... This, is, this isn't a whisk. You can fire this at the speed of light and <laughs> go through anything. <laughs> Shots through the tent, hits a duck, and so they've not he's written... cooking Alarange. <laughs> they've not written anything else in the Bake Off universe. Oh. However, okay. however, they have a two-part series. One is called Cooking for Spies, and one is called Cooking with Spies. <laughs> and the Bake Off isn't in any of the tags. It's just cooking. But... Yeah, part of it's in the summary. It's still Goldeneye, Bond, and Trevelyan. And, yeah. That could be interesting. Nice! I like the idea of that. Mm hmm. There seems to be a lot of this. It's sort of taking people who wouldn't normally be associated with such a domestic setting and putting them in a domestic setting. Yeah. I like it's that kind of thing. It's incredibly heartwarming, yeah. actually. I really like it. Oh, it is, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, it is. Yeah, it's 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 kind of it's kind of nice to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there's so many films and games I've seen where it's like I I enjoy these characters. I want to see them in a domestic setting. Yeah, uh, and... yeah. Everyone was like that with the Avengers. Yeah, I'm glad there are people <laughs> catering to that. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I think Although, that's all we have time. Oh, does ahead, anyone Chris. look at like really domestic stuff and think, oh, you know what would be really good throwing them into like a spy thriller? Yeah, I think they does do. Yeah. Happen? It does, doesn't it? There must, there must be. Oddly enough, maybe that's our next thing: find a domestic style show and find fan fictions about them being set in this high spy novel adventure stuff, because that's got to exist. Barbie Andromeda. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that. But I think that's all we have time for. Unless there's anything else we want to add. Um I don't think so. Just to say thank you to our authors. Keep writing, yes, it's very good. Indeed. Yes. And Are yeah. we ever gonna do a bake off special? Yes. Oh, I think we oh, must yes. now. I think we must. <laughs> so I've got a lot of time to edit during the week of Christmas and we can probably get another episode out this week. That is when this is airing. Oh, okay. We'll see. Yeah, why not? Don't... It's it's our Christmas present from us to you. Merry Christmas. Yeah. As soon as we decide what we're doing for Christmas, <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. But yeah, join us next time. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Good night. Good night. <laughs>